A very good morning, sir. I am Mas Fatma, student manager from BIMHRD. My question for you is, sir, uh, how was your journey and what led, inspired you to become a civil servant from an engineer to MS from US? Thank you for that question. What prodded me first was uh, not liking living in US. So that was the first thing. I stayed there for two years and I didn't really... Uh, you enjoy it on the weekends, but you don't enjoy it otherwise. So overall, you feel that uh, that is not a place that I can really settle into. There was always also this thing that uh, even after doing my structure engineering, I always thought that I would go back, open a structure engineering firm because there's a huge deficit of real structure engineering firms in India. It still is. But then I also got a little bit bored with structure engineering. And that is what your pro chancellor was also saying. The whole ecosystem of education in India is that sometimes you don't even realize which direction you are going into. So now if I go into hindsight and I look myself uh, at probably the interest that I always had, I would have gone in liberal arts than engineering. I would have gone and studied economics probably. And that is what I intend to do even now. I have not stopped and I would be soon going for a master's again in four or five years to come. Not immediately. That's still four or five years uh, ahead. But then I started realizing that I also could be a structure engineer for the rest of my life. I always wanted to be a part and uh, it would look like a very bookish answer but would wanted to be a part of the whole uh, trajectory that our country is on in one way or the other. And I thought uh, UPSC and being in civil services gives you that platform. Uh, I still believe it's an unparalleled uh, land to get working in uh, public service, uh, being an IS officer. I don't know of any other job in this world which provides you such a depth and such a breadth of the various topics uh, that you can be dealing with. You will be dealing with education one day, health one day, infrastructure the other day. You will be dealing with uh, animal husbandry on some days. Uh, the stray dogs and stray cows are very much a part of my daily job as roads and bridges and other uh, things are concerned. So I think it gives you a very huge landscape, would really exhort a lot of you to also go for it. It all depends on what you want from your life. Uh, it's, it's a space which will not give you a lot of money, but you'll be very satisfied in your life and you'll be taken care of as far as comforts are concerned. But yes, hard money is not much in government service. That is something that you'll have to be very, very sure about. But I have never felt the need also because a lot of things get taken care of. So this is from a personal domain I'm telling. Because you always have to think about a selfish personal domain as well. It cannot be public service 24 by 7. It has to be something little bit beyond for you, for your family and for your own personal uh, actualization as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Myself, Kalyani Kavle, and my question to is how smart city or and metro city relate each other or help each other for Pimpri Chinchwa? So, well, smart city, as far as the legal entity is concerned, it's an incorporated company. It's a Section 8 company. Uh, there is a chairman and MD for that is additional chief secretary revenue, Nitin Karir, sir. He is the chairman of our board. I am the CEO of smart city. And it's a whole different legal entity than municipal corporation. But naturally, so I'm also the commissioner of municipal corporation. So there is a great synergy that we have between smart city and municipal corporation. There are multiple ways where smart city has been able to help the municipal corporation. Like just to give a small example, there are various projects that we implemented. One of the projects that we implemented also one of your uh, speakers today said was about smart sarthi. So smart sarthi is something which has really onboarded and which is really re-energized the whole sarthi concept that Shrikar Pardesi sir started 2012-2013. So much so that the citizen engagement and today's program is a part of that entire smart sarthi citizen engagement. We were trying to engage with various cross sections of the society. So we are engaging with students, we are engaging with school students, we are engaging with senior citizens, we are engaging with RWAs, we are engaging with industries. So various cross sections of society trying to understand their problems, their issues, their solutions, their feedback. So that's just one example. So it started with smart city, but now it's helping the whole municipal corporation in terms of the grievance redressal, in terms of people putting up their grievances on the smart city, uh, uh, smart sarthi portal. And uh, with some pride, I can say we've been sufficiently successful in trying to solve grievances of the people through Smart Sarthi portal. 
there is something definitely that we can improve on uh, as is there for any system but we've been sufficiently successful in trying to solve small small issues you know street light is not working the manhole in my area is open the sewerage is not working the drain is not being cleaned there's a pothole in my road these small issues which keep irritating uh, citizens i think smart sarthi has been very successful and then there are multiple solutions there is a there is a whole solution a whole project in smart city where we've onboarded 35 services of our municipal corporation on e platforms and then integrated all those solutions so property tax there is a whole portal water taxation portal sky sign portal which gives you know permission and licenses for the holdings that you see or commercial establishments and all of these portals are getting integrated onto a common platform where for the citizen the end result is a seamless service i go on a common platform i should be able to avail all the services at the back end for the municipal corporation it integrates all my data onto a common platform where on a common platform i can have data for property taxation for water taxation for xyz so that then as i said we can play with that data so smart city i think uh, as i said it's just a beginning it's not the end a last example uh, I don't know how many people or how many of you have traveled on the Pimpade Sodagar road uh, the pathways that you see the streetscaping urban scaping work that has been done the cycling tracks that you see got started with smart city project so much so that now we have the largest network of cycling tracks in the whole of India and we are moving very very fast uh, we are moving very fast to cover the whole city with those pedestrian with those cycling tracks and that is something which is very very common right you step outside india that is something very natural and here i'm trying to tell you with a pride so those are the things that we are still trying to learn and if you see today's people the stockholm syndrome that used to be earlier where you used to feel ke रोड में खड्डे तो होना ही है पानी तो लेट आना ही है बस तो टाइम पे आना ही नहीं है ऑल दैट इज स्टॉप्ड द काइंड ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेशन दैट पीपल एंड यंग पीपल लाइक यू हैव फ्रॉम अस इज स्काई हाई एंड राइटली सो एंड दैट पुट्स अ प्रेशर आल्सो ऑन अस एंड मोर सो बिकॉज ऑफ द एडवेंट ऑफ द सोशल मीडिया यू गाइज हैव एक्सेस टू वॉट इज द बेस्ट इन द वर्ल्ड सो यू नॉट करेंटली कंपेयरिंग द सिटी दैट यू विजिटेड फिजिकली बट यू आर कंपेयरिंग द सिटी दैट यू सो ऑन इंस्टाग्राम यू आर कंपेयरिंग द सिटी दैट यू सो ऑन फेसबुक you are comparing with the solution that you read about on website or some news portal etc so that's the kind of pressure that gets created in the governments and as i is saying very very rightly so so smart city gives you a great platform a great structure framework to try to solve all these problems thank you uh, good morning sir my name is peesh resh patnaik i am a student manager from bimm uh, as uh, you have already explained Uh, about the traffic uh, traffic situations traffic uh, new traffic rules and regulations that are going to come for with the smart city project uh, so as we all know that uh, smart city is going to bring many job opportunities uh, entrepreneurship opportunities but my question is what are the sectors which we can look forward into it when it comes to job opportunities where we can go where can we can contribute so there are multiple sectors the first sector i told you was is going to be data analytics is going to be a major major driver of change and government alone can't do that so in terms of analyzing the data in terms of taking data from the government and then analyzing and coming up with the solution that would be the first thing second would be your green jobs your as far as sustainability parameters are concerned it could be green mobility in terms of a uh, provisioning of charging stations in terms of provisioning of uh, battery swapping stations in terms of ev vehicles whether they are two wheelers whether they are three wheelers we are now running buses about 600 buses of pm pml run uh, jointly by pmc and pcmc are ev vehicles we intend to make it 1000 by 2027 and then by 2030 replace the whole fleet by electric uh, vehicles so ev mobility green mobility is again some sector that you should be really uh, thinking about there is another sector which is not very glamorous it's sewerage but there's a huge opportunity throughout the india uh, the current uh, dispensation in the government of india is very very serious uh, right from uh, honorable pm to down below to really bring all the cities on to the drainage network there are cities yet probably few areas uh, in pcmc as well some places where you know the drainage is not properly managed there are so many cities you know pcmc is not one of them the planning in pcmc has been uh, really good overall even though we are uh, now struggling to match up with the growth that is happening which don't even have drainage network there are few cities who directly leave the entire drainage into the rivers 
into your nalas. So sewerage, STP technology, and things related to that is also something that we don't think about, but is something which is coming up in a very big way in the next 10 to 15 years. Unless and until each and every small city comes up onto the platform of a proper drainage network plus a proper sewage treatment network. And waste to wealth, we keep saying, but technologies uh, from waste. So waste to biogas, waste to CNG, now waste to hydrogen. So all those things are coming up very, very fast. Uh, something that only I'm telling from point of urban infrastructure. So there would be n number of things which Mr. Gandhi and Mr. Mishra can really throw light on uh, later as well. Sir, Pune city also has a problem of huge traffic, which creates a mental and physical dissatisfaction of the citizens. So how we are going to deal with this problem? So I like to segregate myself from Pune city. <laughs> I will talk about Pimpri Chinchwar. Pimpri Chinchwar still the situation is A, not that bad, but not perfect as well. So we have not reached the situation which Pune is currently facing, but few areas we are inching towards that and that is your Wakad Road or you know your Bhumkar Chowk and other places. Now you are saying maybe around your college also. The Kala Khadak Road, etc. So I am very well aware about uh, that stretch as well. Uh, there are multiple things that we need to do about traffic and there is not just one thing, right? I just talked to you about parking. Parking policy and parking regulation is a huge, huge ingredient of a smooth traffic flow. We intend to do that. Currently your parking on the roads is absolutely free. We intend to start charging all of you going forward. Because that is how we would be able to regulate people traveling to random places. You know, your innermost part of the, and you will be surprised to know, in India, the whole focus is increased parking spots. The whole focus is increased parking areas. Paris is doing away with 1,40,000 parking spaces in Paris downtown. You might think, why? Because they are saying in downtown, you don't need your car. You please use public transport. You use metro, you use bus, but we are doing away with the par parking spaces. So parking is one very important factor for that. Second factor is also public transport. Now public transport is easier said than done. I myself am not using public transport. So the kind of uh, ethical uh, push that I can ask people to do it limits me personally. But from the side of the city, we are trying to do multiple things. Metro has come up till PCMC and little beyond. It's going to go till Nigiri. We are now talking of a metro from uh, Wakar to Nashik Fata, further to Chakan. There is already a metro till Hinjewadi, uh, Shivaji Nagar, Kothrud, Katra. So the whole twin city, PMC, PCMC, metro is an important part. The BRT corridors that you see in PCMC are the best in India. We have the best network of BRT corridors. Ahmedabad is a little bit better than us, but after Ahmedabad, we are there. So public transport would have to be a very, very critical part of that. And then, you know, regulation, simple danda. Danda by municipal corporation and danda by also police. And finally, engineering solutions, which would require, for example, this Kala Khadak part, there's a plan to completely bypass the Bumkar Chowk and take it beyond through a a series of uh, four level segregated uh, grade separator but then we are having to deal with the national highway also and national highway is also coming up with the whole thing so i'm just trying to tell you so these are the four or five things that we are looking at and smart city has been an important uh, uh, ingredient in that as far as atcs is concerned i already briefed you about atcs also good morning sir uh, sir, I want to know that how do you see the contribution of private players or the corporate houses alongside the government and the public sector towards the building of smart city? Private sector and corporate sector is very, very important, not just as the people implementing the projects. When we call for projects, it's always the private sector who comes in. For example, currently we are working with LNT, Tech Mahindra, uh, Etos. Uh, with varying degree of success and with varying degree of plus minuses, but we are working with these and these are very much private sectors. They are helping us integrate various things. For example, the GIS platform or the ERP platform or bringing all services on a common platform, ETOS is helping us. LNT has helped us create a 600 kilometer fiber network throughout the city. 
it's a multiple duct that we have and we are absolutely ready to roll out 5G in the city with the help of that optical fiber uh, network that we have. TechM is helping us implement all these smart solutions like smart uh, water meters, uh, smart uh, water analyzers, smart air quality analyzers, CCTVs, automated traffic control system. So private sector has been a very, very strong part in terms of us implementing it. And as I said, startups would start to become a real driving force as far as this data crunching is concerned. Because government is generally a little bit weak in doing the data analytics. And I see startups and I see a lot of private players coming in and leveraging this data. So there's a whole platform called IUDX where uh, it's a Government of India initiative spearheaded by IIC Bangalore where we are putting up our entire data on a platform and then starting to share it with various stakeholders and we would be charging our data obviously. So we would be making money out of that data as well in time trying to solve a problem also. Okay, uh, very good morning sir. My name is Pooja Bhatt. I'm student manager from BMHRD. So I was, uh, I was going through an article uh, regarding the negatives or the backlash that the smart city is facing. So I came across a statement that stated, as a city moves along its smart city journey, it has to bring the public along. So sir, I want to ask you, how are you planning to educate the youth and the regular citizens regarding the trust deficit that might get created because of uh, the smart city project? Because I'm sure there must be resistance from different sections of the society. So I think, I mean, I'm sure you're, you have certain plan to, you know, cater to those situations. So yeah. Part of the plan. Is this? Talking to all of you, talking to 600, 700, 800 of you, trying to make you understand what smart city is doing. This is a part of the plan. We, we did it in DY Patel, we did it in Symbiases, we are doing it with you. We are going to do it with some other colleges. Similarly, we are engaging other people like RWAs, Resident Welfare Association, Senior Citizen Association, Industry Association, Business Association, Market Associations, various NGOs, various civil society partners, various opinion makers. We are trying to put a communication, communication strategy in place. Uh, we've done a decent job, not a perfect job. We are trying to make ourselves better. But you're absolutely correct. There is a greater need for us to communicate what we've been trying to do or what we've, what we've done more, you know, in a, in, a, in a better way. Because, you know, one thing that we sometimes fail to understand that they are very, these are very complex projects. It is not simply uh, creating a portal. Or it's not simply creating a software solutions. When we talk about, uh, and currently we have about 7,000 CCTV cameras in the city. When we talk about that, it is not just installing a camera and that's all. It's about installing the camera. It's about digging your roads. It's about laying your optical fiber, connecting all these cameras to a security architecture, connecting all these cameras, then finally to a ICCC, trying to operationalize the integrated control and command center, and also integrate the various other factors. And that's just one solution I'm saying. So it is a complex project. It is up to us to make it successful and our duty to make it successful. But thank you uh, for that feedback. We are also on the same track, trying to make our communication better. And frankly, such platforms are a part of that strategy. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request Dr. Nutan Samdani, Associate Professor, to brief about SBUP Entrepreneurship Development Cell. Thank you, Priya. A very good morning to one and all present here. Myself, Dr. Nutan Samdani, feel privileged to present a brief about Entrepreneurship Development Cell to be launched at Sri Balaji University, Pune, before such an August gathering. I would like to begin with a quote by management thinker, Professor Peter Drucker. The best way to predict future is to create it. And we at Sri Balaji University believe in it and always strive hard to follow it. And one such avenue to create future is through entrepreneurship. And I would like to uh, express my gratitude and pleasure that in lines with whatever Honorable Shekhar sir has said today, we have taken this first step by launching the ED cell today. With a motto to inculcate spirit of entrepreneurship and nurturing tomorrow's job creators, we are founding the ED cell at Sri Balaji University. 
the ED cell will provide a platform for the students to think and innovate, which will further enable them to solve some business and social problems. The short-term goals of ED cell include building network of industry experts, mentors, and investors, conducting inter and intra B-School flagship events, launching content activities for branding. The long-term vision of EDSL includes creating a sustainable entrepreneurship ecosystem which would contribute to the economic growth and social entrepreneur development by means of an incubation center and successful startups. In order to achieve the short-term and the long-term goals, we plan to conduct various activities through the ED cell at SBUP, namely like hackathons, master classes by founders, pitching workshops, entrepreneurship magazine, e-summit, e-week, TEDx talks, and many more. We also plan to start, up, start an entrepreneurship course which would have a good blend of theory and practical. The incubation center would provide an opportunity for students to get, get their startups incubated for two to three years. The incubation center would offer services like access to experts and studio, mentoring, support to legal and financial matters, trainings and workshops, co-working spaces, and other infrastructural facilities. We look forward for the enthusiastic involvement of our students and faculty members to make this a successful mission. With the support of our management at SBUP and government bodies like Pimpri Chinswet Smart City Limited, we are confident that we will be able to hit all milestones as planned. With this assurance, I would like to take your leave and once again thank SBUP management for this opportunity given to me and also thank everyone for the patient listening. Thank you and good day to all. Over to you, Priya and Devansh. Thank you, ma'am. Now is the time for launching our entrepreneurship development cell. So I request our honorable chief guest, Shri Shekhar Singh Ji, to do the honors. <laughs> Thank you, dignitaries. May I now request our Pro Chancellor SBUP to present token of gratitude to our chief guest, Shri Shekhar Singh Ji. <laughs> 